key modern railways. In-depth railway news. So we're here at uh, Viva Rail's Long Marston site uh, at, towards the end of September. At the moment we're finishing off our order of trains for the Welsh Government. Uh, two of them are in Wales now and there are three here which will be going very shortly. Also we've got the first three of our Isle of Wight EMUs which are in the shed right behind me. They will be going to the Isle of Wight before Christmas and complete their test running on the track there uh, before the line is closed and remodeled in the first quarter of next year. The final two trains will be completed at our factory at Southam which we'll be moving to very shortly. Right behind me is our test train 23002 which was the technical prototype for the Welsh trains. It's three coaches, uh, two battery driving motor cars and the middle car has got diesel jet sets and this train is the first mainline battery train that's run in the UK. It's fully approved for carrying passengers and it's many times run for 40 miles on the main line just on its batteries alone. Now in the future we're going to use a different make of battery which will go quite a lot further and in fact this train that's behind me is going to be mod modified and it's going to go to the United States towards the end of this year or two cars of it are. So we're going to be shipping out from here a two car battery train uh, which is going to go to Orbisonia, Pennsylvania, uh, a site which is owned by our 50% shareholder, Henry Posner, and he's going to launch a concept called Pop-Up Metro in the US. Uh, I'm speaking about this at a conference in Boston later in the week, and Henry is at various venues. The concept is very simple. In the US, there are hundreds, literally, of towns and small cities that have freight lines that run into the downtown area, many of which have very few freight trains, maybe one a day, sometimes only one a week. And the concept is, with temporal separation, i.e. running when the freight trains aren't, that um, RDC, Henry's company, will lease this train and others uh, to people who want to try out a metro service. Not only the train will be leased, but also the automatic bat battery charging, fast charge and platforms as well. So for the less than the cost of a consultant's report to say how difficult it will all be and how expensive it will be to construct the metro, uh, townships can actually try out this, this train, run it for a year and see whether in fact there is the ridership that they're looking for. Yes. Uh, Viverel has a suite of trains. Uh, the first type that we've put in service are the Welsh ones, which have a battery driving motor car at each end. They are diesel battery hybrids, like 002 behind me. Their middle car has diesel gen sets. Exactly the same concept will apply both to pure battery trains where the middle car, if there is one, could have additional batteries, thus extending the range. We're also, at the moment, building a three-car train, the middle car of which will have a pantograph and a transformer to charge up from the 25 kV. Now, any of these trains will have the capability of running up to 100 or more miles off between charging, so 100 or more miles beyond the 25 kV, or if it's not in an electrified area, can be charged up by our automatic fast charge patented uh, charging system, which has now got interim approval from Network Rail to be installed as the UK's standard battery train charging system for any make of train. Viverell intend to be out there with the first company that's actually got a mainline approved battery train running and has run many miles and we intend to be out there with a whole variety of options. Uh, I'm sitting on one of our new Hopeki battery rafts. We've been working with Hopeki now for nearly three years to perfect this. 
there's a hundred kilowatt hours of energy beneath me, at least that's what it has at the end of its life, for seven years, it'll have more when it starts. Now these are being fitted to our class 230s. The first train that will go into service with them is the one that we're building for our American shareholders and will be going out to be part of the pop-up metro promotion in the US. Then after that, they'll be fitted to a train that we're currently building, which will charge up from the 25 kV and then carry on for up to 100 miles by using six of these battery rafts under the two end cars. But there is more. Uh, in the UK, there are something like 3,000 older DMUs, all powered by diesel engines, which were fitted prior to any of the modern European emissions requirements, so they don't even meet stage one. Uh, they all drive a Voith gearbox, uh, which drives the final drives on one of the wheel sets. We have a plan and we'll be launching a product before long uh, to electrify those DMUs. We'll fit a motor, 280 kilowatt motor, where the Voith gearbox is, remove engine, radiators, fuel tank, various other bits and pieces, replace them with two or three of these batteries, and those trains will have the same performance as with diesel, except that they will accelerate at more or less twice the rate, which will mean that on stopping services, journey times can be reduced, and they can be charged up by our patented fast charge system, which has now obtained interim approval from Network Rail as the UK's standard battery charging system for any type of battery train. When one of these trains fitted with this arrives at that charger, and all the driver has to do, by the way, is stop the train at the stop board, it's all automatic from then on, and even if the train has been its full range of up to 100 miles, it will charge automatically in no more than 10 minutes. Lesser distances, less time. On a shortish branch line, it could be only a couple of minutes to charge. There are other plans following on, but all using the same principle, although clearly as new technological opportunities arise, we'll see whether it's sensible to use it. Visit www.keymodernrailways.com for more interesting and essential information about the British Railway Network.